Hello and welcome to the program. We are continuing with the post-mortem on the just uh, concluded elections in Nigeria. Now, the 2019 general elections have been concluded, but not devoid of encumbrances which affected polls in some parts of the country. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, conducted the presidential and national assembly elections on the 23rd of February, having rescheduled it uh, due to what the commission envisaged as logistic challenges. And on the 9th of March, that of governorship held in 29 states, while state houses of assembly elections took place in 36 states, including the FCT, where area council elections also held. Now, results of these elections have been made public and are known to Nigerians, with the exception of governorship elections in six states, where two leading parties could not win convincingly in the first poll. INEC declared elections in those states as inconclusive, reasons being that votes cancelled in each of the states were higher than the margin between the leading candidates and the runners-up. The umpire has since fixed the rerun elections in the affected states uh, for the 23rd of March. Many Nigerians have expressed concern about the spirit of inconclusive elections and avalanche of uh, malpractices by politicians and their supporters during the elections. There were also alleged uh, vote buying, multiple failure of card readers, snatching of ballot boxes, impersonation of security agents, kidnapping of INEC officials, and destruction of electoral materials by suspected thugs. Tonight on Weekend File, we will put all the dramas, upsets, surprises, and aftershocks into perspective as the file opens for today. It's good to have you join us again on the show. I am Kirian Umayo. The news is first. <laughs> The uh, president of following uh, a, a attack by gunmen in Nandu village in uh, Sangha local government areas of Kaduna State, a statement by the senior special assistant to the governor on media and uh, publicity, that's the governor of Kaduna State, uh, Samuel Aruan, indicates that the attackers also raised several houses in the village. Uh, the state government says it will collaborate with security agencies, traditional and religious institutions to restore peace to the area. Meanwhile, the state emergency management agency has been directed to immediately provide relief materials to the affected community. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari has assured the actors in the communal and uh, persistent violence in Kaduna State to come to terms with the fact that mutual violence has no winner but losers on both sides of the conflict. A statement by Garba Shehu, senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, says the president, while reacting to the endless carnage in Kaduna State on Saturday, says he is deeply troubled by the fact that people derive joy in shedding the blood of others perceived as enemies. President Buhari says no responsible leader would go to bed happy to see his citizens savagely killing one another on account of ethnic and religious bigotry. President Buhari noted that lack of cooperation by those involved might frustrate government's effort towards finding a lasting solution, especially if those efforts are politicized. The president also appealed to the warring communities to stop inhibiting the national emergency management efforts to deliver food, medicines and temporary shelter to the victims of the violence who are in urgent need of assistance. The State governments have been challenged to work out solutions to address increasing incident of collapsed buildings in parts of the country. The call became necessary following recent incidents of collapsed buildings in Lagos and Ibadan, southwest of Nigeria. Correspondent Lanre Bailey, who has been monitoring the situation in Ibadan, reports that the two survivors in the Ibadan incident are back in their homes. Consensus among the people, experts and non-experts alike, especially those people living around this collapsed building, is that there's a structural defect with the building, and that's the reason why it collapsed. They were brought here yesterday, around 6 p.m. in the evening. They had bruises 
and they had just minor injury on their head. So they were treated and they discharged them yesterday. So they did not admit them and none of them died. Members of Council for Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren, Emergency Response Agency officials say investigation be commenced immediately with a view to finding a lasting solution to the ugly incident. We are going to seal off this place so that no damage can be done, no alteration can be done. Even if the design is good, the construction method being poor, it's something, it's a disaster that we're just waiting to happen. Some of the residents also expressed their dissatisfaction with the level of response from emergency agency officials in other state. There should be a quick response to disaster within 30 minutes to save lives that could be lost through incidents like this. And this place was crowded, even to gain access. Some of our staff were stoned. So it's frightening when you want to rescue and people are people have taken over. I know they are angry because of what happened, but I think we need more awareness creation among ourselves. The owner of the building has been identified, although not revealed to newsmen. However, investigation on the matter, they say, we unravel all the mystery behind the collapse in Ibadan. Larry Belayi, NTA News. Some owners of distressed buildings being demolished by the Lagos State Government are counting their losses as they claimed they were not given prior notice before the structures were pulled down. Amaka Owo has more on that. Demolition continues on day two in Lagos Island. For owners of these buildings, it is a harsh reality to accept as it now dawns on them that the state government will not rescind its decision to pull down buildings with structural defects. I say, where is the paper they gave to you to come and break my property? So you just give me that paper that they use to break at uh, Itafaji. So I say, is, is it the one that happened now? That is why you come to break. You know this one is in court, and they have not given me the one to go and break it by myself. So they didn't hear anything from me. Fathia Lawal says her deceased father owns this building on number 33, Ojogiwa, opposite police station. They didn't tell me anything. I just heard this morning that they demolished my father's house and there's not anybody there at all. The house is just empty. There's nobody there. Okay, so how do you feel about this? As you see me so, I feel concerned. NTA Camera Lens also got a lawyer managing one of these buildings. Lagos State um, Building Control Agency, of course, intimate us of the structural defect. And we inform them that um, we are going to correct it. We will not um, restrain them from nothing. They can do their thing. We will engage them further. Officials of the Lagos State Building Control Agency say at least four buildings were demolished today. They noted that despite having marked 80 buildings, more buildings are being discovered to be on the verge of collapse, thereby increasing the number of distressed buildings to over 100. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. Wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has condoled with the parents and family members of those who lost their lives during the recent building collapse in Lagos. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports that Mrs. Buhari was received by the medical director of the Lagos Island General Hospital, Dr. Ghani Kale, and was conducted around the wards where the victims are currently receiving medical attention. Those who sustained various degrees of injuries are in stable condition and uh, responding to treatment, prompting Mrs. Buhari to commend the efforts of Lagos State Government and other stakeholders for their quick response to the unfortunate incident. I would like to send my condolence message to the parents of the children that died and also to the entire people of Lagos State. Mrs. Buhari also wished the victims quick recovery and prayed eternal rest for those who lost their lives. An early morning fire disaster has destroyed more than 200 shops at uh, Maganda Road, a popular wood market in Kano. Correspondent Monsieur Aliu Hassan, who was at the scene of the incident, reports that shop owners 
uh, suspected electrical problems. Wood is one of the four major wood markets in Kano. For decades, it has been a source of livelihood to thousands of people from within and outside the state. This is the second time the market is experiencing fire outbreak in less than two years. The letters which started Saturday morning engulfed about 200 shops, destroying more than half a billion naira rows of woods and assorted goods. It started around 4 o'clock. When I rest up this morning, about to come to my shop, someone called me that this is what happened at Naganaru. I said, what? He said, fire incident. I said, wow, for four years ago, we explained this kind of thing. A lot of a million plus, and nobody to help. It's not God Almighty. Firefighters reported to the scene of the incident on time and quenched the fire as shop owners are still counting their losses. At the time of filing this report, investigation is still ongoing to ascertain the cause of the inferno. In Kanu, Mansur Ali Yuhasan, NTA News. Wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has called on Nigerians, especially women and youth, to sustain the spirit of patriotism demonstrated during the general elections to collectively make the next level a reality. Uh, she said this at the reception to commemorate the victory of President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Yemi Oshibajo in Lagos. Of course, the details of that report will be coming to you subsequently in our bulletins. Now, the fact-finding committee set up by INEC to investigate the conduct of March 9th election in River State has submitted its report. In a statement, the INEC National Commissioner Information, Festa Sokoya, says that the commission notes that the governorship and state assembly elections took place in 17 out of the 23 local government areas, that re the results are in the commission's custody, and that declarations were made in 21 state constituencies out of the 32 before the suspension. In the meantime, INEC will issue detailed timeline uh, for the completion of the election on Wednesday, March the 20th, 2019. Similarly, INEC will conclude the collision of results of Tafawa Belawa local government area of Bauchi State in relation to the governorship election on Tuesday, March 19, 2019, uh, as the duplicate and regional registration uh, area results are available. The commission directed that the error in the total number of cancelled votes in four polling units in Nengi local government area should be corrected from 25,330 to 2,533. A new coalition officer has also been appointed to conclude the exercise. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army has set up a nine-man committee to prove alleged complaint of misconduct leveled against its personnel during the just-concluded general elections. A statement by the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Sage Mosa, says the committee's terms of reference is to investigate the conduct of officers and troops during the concluded electoral process across the country. The committee is also to collate and analyze all reports to determine the veracity of the allegations, including the alleged assassination attempt on River State Governor Yeson Wike. Other terms of reference include investigating circumstances that led to the shooting to death of Lieutenant Kurumi and injuries inflicted on an officer and some soldiers in the state. The Alumni Association of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies has raised the bar in government's efforts to tackle insecurity and terrorism in the country. In, at its 39th annual general meeting in Abuja, the association made uh, impactful recommendations that are expected to strengthen government's efforts at promoting unity and national development. Correspondent Doyin Dia reports. Viable economy to support the growing population as well as moral degeneration are some of the issues associated with insecurity globally. Rising from its annual general meeting in Abuja, the Alumni Association of the National Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies Kuru decried the new forms of organized crimes in Nigeria, which include insurgency, kidnapping, and ethno religious conflicts. To also appreciate your effort towards building a better society by organizing a dialogue on democratic stability, for national security, and the implications of the farmers' herders' conflict. 
For the experienced Democrats and senior executives here who are alumni of the Institute, the meeting is not all about their alma mater, but a serious demonstration of their patriotism on nation building. We intervene at all times on national issues that we believe will benefit the country. But the missing link, actually, is that the federal government is not using most of the report we have turned out from NIPS. By creating uh, technical committees that will understudy some of these challenges and advise government on the appropriate situations to take. And with some of the realities on the outcome of the 2019 general elections, a collective engagement of both the government and the governed is required for the actualization of the sustainable peace and development in the country. I've just finished election where Nigerians will see massive changes in terms of security and development of the nation. The input of ANI will help in having an enhanced national security strategy. Toward addressing the root causes of the Boko Haram, which include but not limited to poverty, unemployment, social inequality. Also working on a lot of possible strategies. To assist the nation in coming together to a roundtable discourse. The 39th annual general meeting of the Alumni Association of the National Institute again provided the opportunity to review the security situation in the country with an appraisal on the commitment of the present administration towards providing a safe haven for all in Abuja doing dear NT News. The Special Advisor to the President on Niger Data and Coordinator of the Presidential Amnesty Program, Professor Charles Dokubo, has encouraged Niger Deltans to not to depend on stipends for survival. Rather, they should join forces with the federal government in creating jobs and enabling environment for development to thrive in the region. Professor Dokubo said this at a media parley in Abuja, as Joseph Johnson reports. Total number of 1,000 Niger Deltans have so far been trained in different sectors, while about 1,200 have been employed. Professor Charles Dokuba noted this. He, however, frowned at the actions of some unscrupulous elements in parts of the region, who he said are trying to frustrate the progressive trajectory that the program is bringing to bear. The people of the Niger Delta in the past have claimed that they've not been given access to things that they should have done and benefited from Nigeria, especially even within the oil industry that is situated in the environment. I decided to look at the issues and how do we address them. We cannot address the issues by just paying stipends to people. We must create an environment in which they will be educated in vocational training and others so that they could attain heights and also have access to employment opportunities in the program. And that, not only that, but also to look for job placement so that they could work and that we can also stop their stipend as once they have jobs. He also made it clear that henceforth the office will no longer send people abroad for training in order to cut down on unnecessary spending and engage competent indigenous capacity to train more Niger Deltans in the country. Joseph Johnson, NTA News. Of different artists across the country. Arena Akaloka reports that the document is a companion to property tickets. to fit your lifestyle. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Thank goodness we changed to Royal Ceramic Tiles. Like mother, like daughter. <laughs> Royal Ceramics. 
finish in style. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, in which story, okay, unverified, read. doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Well, we'd like to apologize for the loss of uh, audio shortly before uh, those uh, commercial uh, uh, adverts. And now we continue with the report. ECOWAS Parliament is urging national governments within the sub-region to face the challenge of youth unemployment to curb poverty and undocumented narration or uh, migration of the people. Uh, Speaker Mustafa Siselo advocates uh, mobilization of uh, financial resources to tackle the menace of unemployment already. The West African legislature has resolved to hold a forum in the second semester of its session on youth unemployment. He says it is necessary for national governments to promote good economic policies, effective management of uh, public assets, and uh, combat corruption. The speaker was uh, uh, speaking at the end of the extraordinary session of the parliament in Dakar, Senegal. All right, now, this is We Can File on the network service of the NTA. Now, let's begin um, our program from uh, River State, and uh, that's uh, exactly uh, where there are indications uh, that the election uh, was uh, suspended in the state for obvious reasons. Let's get uh, Onengia Fineface to tell us more about that. After the widespread violence that characterized the conduct of the first round of elections on the 23rd of February, the electorate in River State were subjected to another slot of infraction, this time at the stage of results collision after a peaceful start to the governorship and state assembly polls. A myriad of alleged electoral abnormalities ranging from ballot box snatching, involvement of armed persons in military uniforms, Malpractices by staff of INEC, among other factors, led to INEC's suspension of the process in the state. And I think INEC should do more to try to release results real time. INEC's fact finding panel, after the 48 hour time frame given it to submit reports on the issues at stake, is yet to make its findings public. They should go ahead and announce the winner of this election so that everywhere will be can. They should not cancel the election. While the electorate and political class in other states are celebrating victories and challenging defeat, protests and agitations for declaration of results are the order of the day in Rivers. Will the electorate in Rivers State determine their political fate after all? Will the outcome of the polls depend on the decision of INEX fact-finding panel or even Will the state be put through another round of elections? Only time will tell. On Nengie, fine face, and the news. Let's uh, turn our attention to Kano State in northwest Nigeria. It is a state uh, that has often uh, leveraged its democratic advantage during elections, and that was noticeable in the just concluded elections where the state pulled the highest votes in the country during the presidential election. But there is another interesting thing going for Kano State, and that is the strength of voter awareness, especially among the women. Muhammad Rabi Ali reports that these are indications of the acceptable of uh, democracy and uh, resolve to strengthen democratic norms by the people of Kano State. This have shown that 60% of electorate for 2019 general elections in Kano were women. Habi Abdu, an 80-year-old woman from Shanono local government area, was among the thousands that exercised their franchise during the governorship election. This development was as a result of voter education by relevant stakeholders before the elections. Many of these women, like Habi Abdu, were afraid to participate in the electoral process before this time. We have invited different women groups, specifically to have an intellectual and interactive 
sessions with them relating to how to mitigate mitigate against violence on women, particularly as it relates to election processes. We are very much concerned about the role women play in our politics and our electoral processes. Due to those uh, violences, women do away with uh, voting. They even decided not to come out during elections so that to avoid engaging themselves into any form of violence. The belief was that enlightenment on voter education played a significant role in the large turnout of electorates. Prior to our sensitization that we did, in some areas, people don't normally even come out of vote, maybe for the fear of violence or for the fear, or for the fear that whatever, whenever they are, uh, what, whatever they elect, it will not be given to them. But we told them that it's only you cannot go and tell any agency of the federal government that uh, you are, what you voted was not given to you. It's only when you vote that you have the right to, what, to complain. So this voters' apathy and the vote buying, we conducted so much sensitization, and we are happy with the, the turnout of voters, especially women. 2019 elections in Kano have its peculiar challenges, especially governorship, which was declared inconclusive. Muhammad Rabi Ali. Now, the importance of internal democracy within political parties to the advancement of the electoral process cannot be overstated. Even the political spectrum acknowledges that uh, without it, governance risks disintegration in a democratic dispensation. Beatrice Anyam in our Emo state has been looking into this. Democracy among political parties is a process in which members of a political party have absolute power to choose who will represent them at all levels, including the leadership of the party, without any form of imposition from any quarter. Regrettably, political parties in Nigeria have relegated the concept of internal democracy to the background. In Imo State, for instance, in the just concluded electoral process, among the frontline political parties, accusations and counter accusations of imposition of candidates against the will of majority of party members. This ugly development, the analysts say, is inimical to the enhancement of the concept of democracy. Internal party democracy, for me, I believe it should uh, entail the owners of the party contributing to build the party. Building the party in terms of funding the party, in terms of providing political education for their members. But contrary to that, what we see today is that the political parties are like businesses that one man is owning. How then could democracy be promoted in Nigeria? You need to attain democracy. You need to be informed. You need to be motivated. You cannot tell somebody who cannot afford three square meals, who hasn't got a job, whose kids are out of school, you start telling him about democracy. You create a sustainable environment. That sustainable environment creates a platform on which people will begin to take the pain to learn. An elder statesman, Chief Emmanuel Iwenyangu, is of the view that making political offices less attractive will go a long way in eliminating internal wranglings among members of political parties in quest for positions. This Daniel, uh, one term is enough for any executive power. But for legislation, actually, it's not easy to impose uh, uh, tenure on legislation. To promote democracy in our country, the respondents are calling for serious reforms in the Electoral Act and political parties. In a worry, Beatrice Anyam. And this is Weekend File on the network service of the NTA. We thank you for staying with us as uh, we take a panoramic view of the just concluded uh, 2019 general elections. And our guest tonight is a professor of political science uh, who will be joining me in a moment. He's a uh, professor Nuhu Yakub. Stay with us. Uh, we'll be back very shortly. Full family, meet our active triplets. Mixology, for example, mixes well with drinks. Then enjoy every quick meal with Slurp It Off. And everywhere you go, there is Gogurt. Packed with healthy nutrition, nourishing vitamins, power of protein, strength of calcium, revitalizing energy. Hollandia yogurt is bursting with goodness inside and out. Hollandia yogurt, it's all good. Hollandia. 
And with me now is uh, Professor Nuhu Yakub, uh, who is a professor of uh, political science. So you're welcome to We Can File. Thank you very much. Now, what is your view as a political scientist uh, of the general conduct of the 2019 uh, elections? Well, put in context, I think uh, the general election this year uh, is actually uh, very unfortunate. Uh, very unfortunate in the sense that, you know, um, after the 2015 general elections, which were generally considered to be, you know, uh, free, fair, and credible, uh, my expe expectation as an individual and also as a professional, I mean, the political scientist, is that we shall have it much better uh, this year. But what is most um, annoying is the fact that, you know, right from the table of uh, the electoral um, umpire, we had some dis hitches or disappointment. Election had to be postponed by one week. And you know, this also led into the postponement of, uh, that's the, the presidential election, mm -hmm. had to be postponed by one week. And also the subsequent one was postponed also by you know, one week. So one will uh, not be happy to notice or to experience this, given the fact that, as the president says, after the postponement of the presidential election, there was enough time for INEC to prepare for the election. That is one. Secondly, you know, the amount the, the INEC asked for, for the administration of the election, was fully provided. What on earth, therefore, will have uh, been responsible, you know, for uh, the, uh, the lack of preparation leading to the postponement of the election? That is one aspect. Well, I hope, you know, eventually, if uh, the government is able to institute, you know, maybe administrative inquiry, we'll be able to get, uh, you know, to know what exactly was responsible for the postponement. Because this is uh, something that, as I said, we ought to have uh, overcome. And also, there's a need for us to learn from lessons of history or events. That is one. Secondly, I also think that uh, the extent to which you have had uh, violence in the election this year is something that, you know, needs to also be contextualized. People have reported that not less than 40 people or so, you know, have died <coughs> during this uh, latest election. For what? This is the question. Is it that there was warfare or operating politics, particularly democratic politics? In democratic politics, you know, I think Nigerians will have to be, especially the political leaders, will have to understand that the rights enshrined in the constitution of the country mm -hmm. have to be respected, particularly the right of association, free speech, free movement. So all these are things that were expected that the politicians, no matter what the stakes are, they will allow voters, they will allow members of the party, and so on, and so on. Nigerians in particular, since they are, were all free agents, they will be allowed to do what we like, provided that whatever we do is within the you know, uh, vortex of the law in this country. And I also think that you know, when we talk about um, you know, um, the preparation for the, the election, what is the role of the political parties? I think I get worried that you know, polit uh, political parties have not been allowed to perform the role they are supposed to do, which is to provide you know, uh, candidates for offices. They have to also mobilize electorate through their civic education to understand that they have to be, part I mean, to have to participate if it's a democracy mm -hmm. we are actually trying to practice. So we have all these um, drawbacks that actually created, you know, a yes. sort of a very sad experience we have had okay, during exactly. this election. But let's look at the distinguishing features yeah. uh, between the just concluded elections and the one we had in 2015, to be precise. You know, because, of course, we, we have continued records of... Um, Ballot snatching. Mm -hmm. There are also new methods, you know, of uh, thwarting the what the law says by uh, some politicians and their supporters with respect to not just snatching ballot boxes, but also kidnapping any official on election day and uh, forcing people to announce results and, and what have you. Well, as I said, you know, we we actually took a very giant step in 2015 in terms of, you know, conduct of election and the success of that election, to the extent that the results were, especially at the presidential level in, in 2015, nobody contested the result. 
But this time around, what you have found out is that, you know, the two leading op 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 the two major parties that actually were involved in this election, you know, what, of course, will expect that there will be a victory of one over the other, right? But the fact, the issue is that, you know, despite the fact that there is, you know, almost more than, you know, uh, 2.8 million, you know, uh, uh, million voters difference between one party, the winning party, and the second, you know, uh, party in the league, you see this comment that there is a um, controversy and the, lo the party that lost or the candidate says is going, is going to, uh, to, to court, which is actually good because it is what we have had this time around is the absence of post-electoral violence, especially at the presidential level. We, what we experienced in 2011 is not, uh, has not been exp experienced since then, so we're happy. But the fact of the matter is that you know, if there was this margin of difference between the winning party and the losing party, one would expect that, you know, uh, just like the remaining 70, 71 uh, presidential candidates that were contested, mm -hmm. nobody raised, an, uh, I mean, any, any concern about the result. They simply accepted the result. We expected that within, because of the margin between the two parties, leading parties, one would have considered power, I mean, a, a victory to the other. But um, it's good, as I said, that the losing party has decided to go to court. Now, you said something earlier um, mm. with respect to uh, the conduct of a political party. Yeah. And uh, what should be their responsibility, especially uh, during an uh, uh, electionary period. And uh, uh, some analysis uh, would say that uh, the election, this last election has actually you know, exposed the undercurrent you know, in the political landscape of Nigeria and then the unwillingness of uh, the key players and their supporters uh, to adhere to the rules of the game. Otherwise, all those encumbrances we recorded are not to have been there. Yeah, we are quite correct. We are quite correct. And that actually also leads me to you know, my uh, position vis-a-vis -vis our definition of democracy in this country. Um, I said earlier that in democracy, you do not expect violence. You allow people to freely express you know, their uh, choice. Because every voter is a free agent. And a voter who, for instance, voted for a particular party at the level of election, for instance, presidential election, some people may prefer the candidate of a particular party. They, which may not also mean that they actually belong to that party or they are a member, I mean, they are members of the party. They are therefore free, if it gets to another level of election, to vote for another party, party of their choice. But in Nigeria, everybody is supposed to be, you know, uh, ruled, you know, into a particular, you know, political, um, uh, po 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 uh, into a political party. You are there, you are not free to express your views and so on and so forth. So, my definition of Nigerian politics is that we are actually not practicing yet what is the basic essence of poli I mean, democratic politics. And that is why, you know, we have, we had the experience, we had just the ones you have, examples you have given, blood snatching, you know, uh, beating of uh, INEC officials, you know, even violence to the extent that, you know, military personnel were killed. And the, and the and destruction, and destruction of, of, uh, materials. Yeah, of materials. All these ones should not have come out. If not, that there are other you know, issues that have been coupled with you know, the sort of politics we are playing, which is that it is you know, a winner's... Um, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it, it is a, 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 well, a, a, a zero-sum game, game. Our politics is a zero-sum game in the sense that you know, a one winner, the, lo I mean, the, the gain of one is the complete loss. Of the of the opponent, and therefore everybody has been has been invested so much into the election, without actually leaving leaving room for consensus. Consensus is one very basic, you know, um, irreducible minimum um, value that you know accompanies democratic politics in any you know for me by, by political community. We don't have it. All right. Now, um, what actually manifested in this election, especially the, the, the election conducted on the 9th of March, that's the governorship and the House of Assembly yeah. election, is the issue of an inconclusive election. That's what right. do you make of that? It happened, it's, it's like a, a new manifestation. It was, it's not new. We have had it. I think, you know, since um, the commencement of uh, the Buhari administration, INEC has held some elections. And we have also, I mean, gotten examples or, I mean, uh, 
Yeah, we have gotten, I mean, very practical examples of, you know, inconclusive elections. It happened in Notion State, you know, and, you know, uh, I think it also happened in Kwa uh, Amikogi State at a point in time. The fact, the fact of the matter is this, that the law allows, or, or no, I mean, the, the, the electoral law identifies or recognizes inconclusive elections. So it is not anything that is contrary to democratic politics. And the reason that is given is that if the difference between the marginal difference between you know the two leading candidates is in, I mean is uh, more than I mean is the level less of the than. yeah is 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 uh, you know is less than the vote uh, votes that have not been counted or that yeah that have been, have been cast that all that have not been you know um, accept, accepted there there is now a, a basis because if you say you are going to simply rely on the leading uh, candidate. Just I mean, uh, 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 injustice might have been done to the other party because the votes that are seen more than the level, I mean, marginal difference, you know, can actually sway the victory to one side. So I think it is um, a welcome development that we experience this. But the way again it has been taken or interpreted by, you know, uh, some of the leading. If, if you look at uh, the, I mean, some of the commentaries coming from the leading candidates in the in, in the states where there are there was uh, inconclusive uh, election. They are say, some of them are saying, declare me to be the candidate. I mean, announce that I'm the winner. I mean, that does not also show that, you know, they have also imbibed the norms of democratic politics, which is that, you know, there must be a clear, I mean, a, I mean clear reason for the electoral administrator to, I mean, to, to announce that this particular candidate is actually the winner. Because we're talking about the mandate of the people. It's not the mandate of the candidate. Okay. That's right. Oh, all right, uh, thank you. You know, I asked that question because uh, uh, since the, uh, the, the, the elections uh, de were declared inconclusive in those states, um, there have been comments, you know, from, uh, uh, from different parties or different persons in Nigeria uh, with respect to why inconclusive in mean, as many as the 60s. And uh, we're beginning to see some kind of a political nostalgia, yeah. you, know, you, know, you know, here and there. But uh, uh, what is the best approach, you know, to this in, in terms of uh, re-educating Nigerians to have that basic understanding of what the electoral uh, rule says, because uh, those who are saying the claim you winner are also those who should know better uh, about it. So is there any, perhaps something that prompts them, you know, to begin to say the claim you winner, well, uh, I don't know, <laughs> when the election is <laughs> declared inconclusive? Well, well, I think, let me, you know, uh, let me at this point actually uh, doff my heart for the governor of uh, Benway State. You know, uh, Samuel Autumn has actually asked, you know, the uh, Benway electorate to be patient. That they should, since the election is declared inconclusive, they should wait. And of course, he's even in the clear, uh, in the, I mean, he's clearly leading, you know, in terms of the results that have been announced so far. But he did not go to the point of saying, you know, declare me by, by all means. Which means that, you know, he has demonstrated, you know, a level of understanding of what you know, uh, what, what, what are the rules, what the rules are, one, and the procedures to be followed. And that if there is, you know, um, incon inconclusive, you know, element that has manifested in the election, one will have to actually wait until there is a rerun. And INEC has promised a rerun. A date has been fixed. For goodness sake, why is it that political leaders are not prepared to actually allow, you know, the, the umpire, that to a large extent has also done, you know, what is humanly possible for for it to do, you know, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the results we have gotten. That they should all, all uh, I mean, exercise patience until the rerun is held. If after the rerun there is still a problem, I think that is when one would expect, you know, that either, you know, um, the because I don't think that's provision by by at the end of uh, the rerun, it must be, it is clear that and so far based on experience the results are going to come out clearly as to who is the winner. So if at that point you can see, you, I mean, one big discovers that the uh, electoral umpire is either, 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 either taking sides or, you know, is uh, very incompetent in handling the rerun, then, you know, people can now say, no, I, I mean, they don't even have to resort to violence, but they can also now go to tribunal to ensure 
that justice is done in this matter. Now, certainly there must be high points uh, that can be mainstreamed or strengthened uh, in our subsequent uh, electoral process. Did you observe any high point uh, in the two elections? Yeah, well, the, 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 the high points are, are that, you know, um, in there are there are there are places or states where you know election you know went on smoothly, you know uh, it was clear. For instance, in Casina, the president won in the last slide. It was clear in um, Borno State, the clear the president won, won um, you know uh, I mean very uh, clearly. But you know when we talk about you know and the high points that we need to mainstream. Let me give you, you know, a, um, a WhatsApp, I mean, a, a chat that somebody from, you know, the Niger Delta sent to my, to my, to, 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 to my uh, phone. And they said, I have observed, and it was an appeal, you know, for restraint on the people of Niger Delta. The, the chat was saying that, you know, the election took place between two Northerners. You got the point? Two Muslims. It's not a, a contest between one religious uh, mm. adherent and the other. Rather, it, two Northerners, two uh, Muslims, two, you know, Fulani gentlemen. What is the problem of people in the River State or in the Niger Delta fighting, and, fighting killing uh, among, and killing themselves? And that, you know, the person was now, at, 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 I mean, appealing to, you know, uh, the people of this region, please, let us have peace. So I think the, the perception of the, I mean, the, the, uh, the, uh, the role of the leaders is very important. And also the patient, perception of the people must you know, be mainstreamed. Because if you believe that you know, the loss, I mean, the, uh, the, 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 the victory of you know, one side of the country is the loss. Uh, the digital song I, I talked about earlier is the loss of uh, the other region. Then you have this perception that you know, by all means we have to contest whether this is uh, fair of, or, or, or not. I believe that, you know, we, I mean, the, the, the electoral tempo in this country will have to be doused it's to such an extent that, you know, we can actually conduct free and fair elections. I do not see why it is not possible for Nigerians to do this. For goodness sake, what is, you know, election, I mean, we have a four-year ele electoral election cycle. Four-year ele election cycle. If you lose this time, what is the guarantee? I mean, what is the uh, why is there no guarantee that the person can win the next time around? After all, you know, if we also try to refer to the example of uh, the experience of uh, the president, he lost three times. It was only during the fourth experience that he was able to, to, get, able to through, get, get through. Yeah. So it, it is. I mean, we should first of all define election as competition or sports. In any sports, you know, sp or any game. There must be, there will always be a winner mm. and there will be a loser. And I have not seen, you know, football, you know, uh, uh, team, two teams who have had I contested for one, you know, um, co co I mean, one, one um, uh, cup or the other. Mm. You know, as soon as the winner emerges, then the other one flares up and mm. begins to, you know, I mean, create havoc on the, on the other. So the, is, is the need for Nigerians to understand that election is a game. You know, of course, it's a game that is, you know, has its own. Whether you lose or, yeah, or you, you win. You lose, but I know also that there is a, a high premium placed on this game. But there is no game that has no premium. Now, you began this conversation by making reference to the rescheduling of, of the election, you know, at the, at the initials from 16th to, yeah. to 23rd. You know, what did that do? Or what uh, uh, did, that, did that impact on, this, uh, on the uh, uh, number of voters that we had in this election? Uh, did it in any way uh, prompt voter apathy in any part of the country? You, you should, we should recall the number of uh, registered voters for this uh, election, over 84 million people. And at the end of the day, how many people actually voted? You know, it's less than, uh, you know, uh, 30, 30 million. Eventually, what, what we got. There was, there must be, that's certainly a question of apathy, which is a major problem, you know, in this election. Of course, maybe uh, the apathy arose because of uh, the rescheduling, which is understandable because as uh, people, a lot of people had to travel to the areas or their polling units where they registered, 
you know, and there was a, as, and you know also the uh, postponement happened just a few hours before elections were supposed to start. So it was, people had already committed themselves, they had spent their money, they have, you know, took, taken a uh, they had taken risk to get to their, I mean, polling stations. And suddenly this thing, you know, uh, uh, took place. But therefore, you will expect that there will be apathy. I mean, there will be, the, the, there was, I mean, one should expect lower turnout, which you actually get, got. So, but the unfortunate thing is that that has had, you know, a, I mean, um, uh, I mean, it, it had had, uh, you know, um, an, an, an impact mm -hmm. on even the election, the gubernatorial and uh, state assembly elections that took place. Because I we have not gotten the entire votes cast during the second phase. It is most likely that, you know, the figures we got during the second mm -hmm. phase will also be lower than the first one. So apathy, you know, the fact that, you know, people were disappointed, you know, and also the fact that, you know, I mean the uh, I mean the the the, the political part, I mean the, particularly the, the leadership. They did not show show what I was I expected. Would be remember when the postponement was uh, I mean was announced, both the president the leading two the two leading presidential candidates started accusing INEC exactly. that it was the other party that influenced the postponement. So I mean there is the the perception of politics in this country is still and let me say you know very uh, uh, poor exactly. indeed. Th th there's something prof that yes. actually played out in in, in this uh, uh, governorship election you know and that is the fact that uh, we the observers noticed the fact that uh, many didn't vote um along a uh, Party lines this yeah. time around, or party affiliation. This is what I said. So I decided to, you know, vote for individuals in whatever, whatever party that they are. I said so at the beginning. I said, you know, because of our intemperate nature, or um, uh, reaction, intemperate reaction to, you know, uh, political behaviors of, you know, individuals, we have a situation where people cannot understand that at a certain level of election, I mean, uh, voters are free. To, even if they belong to a particular party, they are free to vote for the op op opponents, their opponents. And that is because of the fact that, one, the party may actually have a program that is better than their own party. Okay? And they decide to do so. But, of course, in the Nigerian situation, we have, a, uh, we have uh, personalities looming too large. In fact, it's really large, than, more, more than you know, what you will expect in normal you know, democratic societies. In normal democratic societies, people can, will, will, will actually you know, I mean, vote according to certain uh, policy preferences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is what we lack. You know, that is also fueling you know, the extent to which we are having violent elections mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you know, very negative attitude towards election in this country. Uh, all right, uh, Prof, I would like to thank you immensely for uh, your thoughts and the general contribution to the program. It's been uh, great talking to you on this very important topic as we are uh, uh, well. to wind down on our coverage of uh, 2019 general elections. Uh, I've been speaking with uh, Professor Nuhu Yeko, who's a professor of political science. You're still watching Weekend File. We'll be back in just a moment. You're welcome back. Now, we uh, told you the story of the wife of uh, the president, uh, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, uh, when he admonished uh, women and youth on uh, patriotism. And uh, let's uh, take you uh, on that story by bringing in uh, Ali Kabiru, the correspondent who covered the event.
Still in the euphoria of the February 19 general elections, the wife of the president was honored by the wife of the vice president, Zulapo Shinbajo in Lagos, with a surprise reception to celebrate the victory of the APC led administration headed by President Muhammadu Buhari. While appreciating the tremendous support and the role played by the wife of the president in ensuring this victory, particularly the spearheading of the women and youth presidential campaign team and the landmark achievement of their set target, the wife of the vice president maintained that this effort of true Nigerians will never be in vain in their quest of reaching to the greater height. Mr. President, Mohamedou Buhari led the way as he visited every single state in Nigeria, all 36 states and the FCT, campaigning and speaking to all the people to vote for APC. Her Excellency Dr. Mrs. Aisha Mohamedou Buhari also spoke to Nigerians from one zone to another, from one place to another, from Kano to Port Harcourt, from Nasarawa to Oweri. Her Excellency sat with the people, teaching them how to cast their votes. While expressing her happiness, the wife of the president reassured the team supporters, particularly women and youth, that this time hard work and loyalty will be rewarded as emphasized by the president. She called on the party officials and other stakeholders to ensure strict adherence to the laid down rules and regulations of the party for unity and development. This time, the party has to be very firm to make sure that all the cabinet members are card carrying members. Not only that, they should be known as a party member who is very active in his locality. I want to use this medium to reaffirm my commitment towards promoting the social, economic, and political advancement of women through my Future Assured program. Other speakers reaffirmed their readiness to continue to give their support for the development of the party and the nation as a whole. In Lagos, Ali Ukabir, NTA News. And then next is sports. The National Council of Sports has approved the 22nd of March 2020 as the day for the opening ceremony of the 20th edition of the National Sports Festival tagged Edo 2020. The chairman of the council, Solomon Dalung, and directors of sports across the 36 states of the Federation also approved joint hosting of the festival. Why not for the president, who will always give us an intervention for sports would have been nowhere. In another development, ahead of the 26th edition of Nunga Games, Unilag 2019, a one-day seminar was held at the University of Lagos. The resource person centered their topics on ensuring a each free competition. And we want the Nunga Games that we are going to host to be the best. The monsters of sport is injury. We have to sensitize everybody. A team of sports personalities from Cape Verde in collaboration with the Oni of Ife, Obadeyeye Gunwusi, have initiated a move to showcase the rich cultural heritage of Africans through the first African Beach Games, slated for Cape Verde from the 14th to 23rd of June, 2019 and an international boxing show scheduled for Abuja in August. New horizon for African athletes. And these are new sports. These are sports that nobody dominates in. So, so let's give African athletes a chance. We want to show to the world the good things that can happen, that is happening in Africa. That's why we decide, why not to do this, the biggest boxing title in Africa. The remains of former Secretary General of the Nigerian Football Federation, late Taiwo Gunjobi, have been laid to rest in the Badon, the real state capital, and Mr. Encomium from colleagues and professional associates who describe him as a patriotic Nigerian. Taking permission from the Congress and the Executive Committee to rename that Congress, that football house as Taiwo Gujabi Football House. He always gave us peace. They also appealed to government at all levels to immortalize the late soccer icon with sports update, Ulum De Gutwala, NT News. Well, and that's uh, how we conclude the tonight's edition of Weekend Fire. Do join us again next Saturday when we return with a fresh package. Uh, from all of us here in the studio, it's good night.